Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Checking in on the MJ sector, a couple things to talk about before we get into our regular technical analysis. The first is a comparative list that we did, I believe, two weeks ago. Forgot to date it for the exact date, but updating to see where the major MSOs and some other names stand comparative to their 2019 lows. And as you can see, things were a lot stronger when we last looked at it, and I ranked them from the biggest moves to the smallest moves off of their lows. And with where we stand on this updated list, Harv... CL and MedMen are all at their lows. So that is very notable that we are seeing names drop down to lower lows. IAN still down there, only 6% off its lows. It dropped to lower lows compared to the 5% that we were previously at. And we can see CWeb still in the lead because it had the most significant bounce. Cure Leaf is now number two. And we got TRUL and OH in there, but or GTII. If we had to rank the strength from their 2019 lows, CWeb, Cure Relief and GTII standing out head and shoulders among the rest and still a very weak landscape overall. So that transitions into where we stand right now, which is heading into Wednesday, a vote in the House on the SAFE Act. The SAFE Act is the most significant short-term catalyst possible for this sector. And I got to be honest, I'm pretty astounded that we are not seeing any real reaction out of these stocks for this vote that is coming Wednesday. That tells me a number of things. Number one, it's either the market is unaware of what's going on. Number two, the market is aware of the votes that's coming, but that it does not feel, the market does not feel that it will pass the Senate. So they're not really caring about it moving into the house. Number three is, no, those are pretty much the two scenarios. So the first one would be the market is under unaware or the people that are aware are still in the obvious fear cycle that the sector is in and not really able to, they're gun shy, essentially, unable to get confident to make bullish entries, anticipating that if this passes the house, as we are anticipating it will, that it's going to get headlines, it's going to get hype and attention, it will be talked about on CNBC, and we're just not seeing that. So it's going to be very interesting to reflect back on this and say, was this an opportunity where the market was sleeping to a certain degree, where we could have entered? And, and again, we're not looking for any kind of massive crazy breakout, but just strength from this moment or Friday, strength from Friday into the end of next week if that vote does pass as we are anticipating. Got to give a shout out to Mike, one of our members, for giving some really good in-depth information as far as what's to be expected on the process of this bill. And essentially the biggest takeaway that I learned is that this bill has to be agreed on by the House and the Senate. We know that, but it has to be the same bill. So if there's any changes that the Senate is going to make, let's say it passes the House and it goes to the Senate. And if the Senate is going to put any amendments on it, it then has to go back to the House. So if things are going to be expediated, we really need to have a discussion or a, a channel of communication between the House and the Senate. So they're agreeing on the same thing. If the Senate gets the bill from the House and doesn't need to make any changes, they can vote on it right then and there. And there were some amendments added to the bill in an effort to appease Mitch McConnell, who is really the gatekeeper in the Senate for the Republicans. And that was to add some provisions specifying the protections to hemp companies. And with Mitch up for re-election and the fact that his state, Kentucky, is going to be big into the hemp space and he has been helping out with that or at least bullish on hemp in his state, this amendment was an attempt to get him on board with the bill as a whole. We'll see if it works. Again, I'm not holding my breath that this is going to pass in the Senate, but if we fail the Senate for this SAFE Act, it's going to kick the can down the road a good bit as far as how long it's going to take for a significant catalyst in the USMJ space to get going. If it does pass the Senate, it will likely be some short-term party time but again, timing is the unknown factor here. We now know we're going to vote on this in the House on Wednesday. We have no idea how long it's going to take to get to the Senate. We have no idea if it's going to have to go back and forth to the House and the Senate for some reconciliation. So that timeline is unknown. And that's another reason why perhaps the market is not caring as much because it's nothing that's going to be immediately impacting things. So let's get into technical analysis.
GWPH dropping down to lower lows, still very clearly controlled by the bears, the weekly time frame. At this point, I like the monthly time frame to be looking for an equilibrium. We're going to be looking for a higher low to form. We're coming off the all-time high. Support is 90.14. We're still way above that level. I would expect that the most likely scenario is we're going to see a higher low form compared to 90.14 and then a lower high form compared to that all-time high. There have been some grumblings about some potential bad news of some results of the, I forget off the top of my head, epidermics, epi, epi something, their medicine that is patented and potential death, sir. I don't know. I just saw this as a, a short little blip and I didn't look too much into it because I'm not trading GWPH. So that's something to be aware of if you are trading GWPH. But as of right now, the bears have complete control with the daily bounce, not really getting any follow through, dropping straight back to lower lows and anything under 138.86, just a daily lower high as far as I'm concerned. And we'll see if we get back to daily oversold conditions. IIPR has very quietly made a very significant bounce of 20% off of its low, but we are looking a little bit toppy and I would expect a weekly lower high to form here because anything under 115.82 is a weekly lower high. That being said, we are looking for a monthly higher low to form soon. So the monthly chart is back testing and currently holding exponential support. We're going to be looking for a monthly higher low to form soon. Has it formed yet? I need to see a weekly trend change. I need to see us top out pull back and hold 82.15 and then change the weekly trend for our monthly higher low to be clearly set. And we would then look for a monthly lower high compared to the all-time high due to the pullback. I'll be keeping an eye on IIPR for any potential clues where a lot of people are anticipating, myself included, that the SAFE Act passing would be bearish for the fundamentals and the business model of this company. And if we see sustained further weakness, that would start to show me that perhaps people are feeling that the bill has a, a chance in the Senate. So something to watch for for clues, but disregarding the fundamentals, I would be looking for a monthly higher low to form and the bulls are attempting their best for it to be starting now. Cure Leaf, closed strong. We had a downgrade, some uh, not a downgrade, but initiation of coverage from some analysts on Friday and Cure Leaf was initiated as a sell, as was ACB. Harv was initiated as a buy, or not Harv, excuse me. It was Hexo initiated as a buy in, in Canada, and we ended up having a big bull move in response to that. What is notable here is Cure Leaf had a big bear move to start the day and a very significant recovery into the end of the day. Look at that last two hours of trading. Is that the market saying, hey, we got this vote Wednesday, and we're going to be talked about on CNBC because Cure Leaf is the lead USMJ bull as far as marketing goes and appearances on CNBC and market cap. That's potentially what went on here Friday at the end of the day. But the bottom line is a new daily higher low is established at 993. And we're looking right back up at our resistance of 1084 to try and keep the daily uptrend intact. And the Cure Leaf bulls are hoping for some headlines and some help from the SAFE Act passing in Congress this coming week. CWeb. So CWeb is trying to build a higher low at 2174. If the bulls are going to keep this little higher low, higher high pattern up, we're going to have to turn around and break 2425 to see this continuation. If we can't break 2425, it's a red flag for the bulls and 2177, 2174 breaking would be our weekly lower high being set and we'd be looking back down at our low of $20. TRUL Weakness the last five days plus pretty much ever since news came out of all the insiders that were doing a lot of selling and that was leading to four red days in a row essentially and some high bear volume. We are still going to be looking for a daily higher low to form compared to 1036 and the volume is really dropping off. The bulls are hoping that 1126 and 1125 can hold as support. Bulls are going to have to hold 1125 and break $12 to shift short term momentum but we will still be looking for a daily lower high to form compared to 1285 because of the size of the pullback and the amount of volume on that pullback. Looking at it from a weekly perspective, bulls have to hold $10 for a weekly higher low and then turn around and break 1285 to change the weekly trend. Yet another rejection from exponential resistance on the weekly time frame. One, two, three, four bounces, unable to close above these exponential resistances ever since we started pulling back significantly from our peak in April. IAN dropping down to lower lows, got some bullish news on Thursday. Nice reaction to that, but 
not a whole lot of follow through at this point because anything under 333 is just a daily lower high. So again, we can go 10% from where we stand right now and still be setting daily lower highs. So what the bulls need to do here is create as much space as possible for a daily higher low and higher high to form. If we do not create that space, the odds of a daily trend change remain low. Can this be a daily bear flag? Absolutely. The burden of proof is on the bulls and we have to get over the high of that reaction, 293, to negate the possibility of a daily bear flag. If we cannot break 293, it's a potential daily bear flag and that will remain on the table. Daily inside bar on Friday, we saw a surge at the end of the day Thursday that saw zero follow through on Friday, but a little bit of fading up at the end of the day. So we have to break 289 and 293 for bulls to prove anything to us in the short term this coming week. MedMen weakness still stands out. We're dropping down and hitting new all-time lows. Obviously, that is the worst case scenario to be in as a bull in a stock and it's been nothing but red after red. And this is, a, again, trading is hard, but some setups are very easy. And MedMen, if you go back and look at the videos and what we said about MedMen on September 10th through September 12th, it was very clear there were tons of red flags and it's done nothing but follow through for the bears from those red flags. So a nice 20% pullback, but we had a daily equilibrium that broke bullish on news of their deal moving towards completion with a lack of rejections from the DOJ. And the bottom line is to not be able to follow through and to see profit taking an upper wicks on that break, big red flag. And then it was nothing but confirmation of those red flags for the last two weeks. So we're at all time lows. We're looking at two psychological. Any bounce under 282 is just a daily lower high. And this is absolutely the weakest USMJ play, in my opinion, because none of the other ones are at all-time lows. They're definitely weak names out there, and they're at 2019 lows, but they're not at all-time lows. OH, bear flag on the daily confirmed. What was the red flag for OH? It was breaking the top of the bounce of 762 and getting zero follow-through. When you change trends and get no follow-through, you zoom out and look for a flag. And in this instance, we got an hourly trend change with zero follow through. Next thing you know, we confirm the bear flag. A lot of the weight is from CL. CL had some dilution news, but we had the gap down on the dilution news, a lower high and a lower low. That was a bear flag that was very clear as well on Wednesday. And we're now looking at 2019 lows. So we broke $9 psychological support. After 897, our current low, we're going to be looking down at 844 as the next level. And anything under 992 is just a daily lower high. CL bears keeping full control. Also one of the weakest MJ names, USMJ. CL, MedMen, and Harv, which we haven't gotten to yet. There we go. Good transition. So we dropped to a lower low. Actually, I take that back. It is a double bottom by one penny. So that level's still holding, but obviously it's up to the bulls to hold that level on Monday. It's going to be tested again. If we can hold that level, we will look for a bounce and a daily lower high to form. There is no sign of the bulls. We have not been able to see an hourly trend change. What's the indication that our daily higher low has formed? So here's a good example of being wrong as to what the most likely pattern is going to be here. Because on this pattern, I would anticipate that a daily higher low would form above 531 and a tightening equilibrium would form. And that hasn't happened. So how do we avoid losing money when we're wrong? We never get any signal to enter. If we're looking for a daily higher low to form, we need an hourly trend change as the first indication that the daily higher low has been established. We have not changed the hourly trend at any point in the last two weeks of trading. Every single move is just a lower high and a lower low, unable to close over these exponential resistances. And here we are just consistently rejecting. So we never changed the hourly trend. There were no fake outs. We never formed a daily higher low. Every single day for the last three, six, nine, 12 days has been a lower high every single day. So bears have had complete control. And if we break 531, the next level we're looking down at is 456, the all time low. So $5 and then 456. And any bounce, we're just looking for a daily lower high. That's why Harv is on the top three worst performers of the USMJ sector list. GTII has been a standout bull recently. It pulled back on Friday and closed at the low of the day. If we keep pulling back, we have to form a daily higher low compared to 1241. Our key resistance is 1445. And if the bulls are going to keep this daily uptrend intact, 
We need to see higher lows and higher highs. If we were to pull back significantly back down towards $13, we'll still have the daily uptrend intact, but the most likely scenario from there would be a daily lower high would form on a bounce attempt. So the bulls are hoping that the daily higher low forms sooner rather than later. Weekly time frame has a lot of space where we can form a weekly higher low to try and change the weekly trend. Again, the goal for every MJ name is change the weekly trend. And there's a lot of space for GTII, but we will have to see that follow through through the fall to get that weekly trend change. The next three names I've always kept as a group in my mind, just separating MSOs from different services. But KSHB, CVSI, and NBEV are all standing out as very weak. Look at KSHB off an absolute cliff. The, the red flag was a while ago where we broke this equilibrium bearish at 540s breaking and it's been nothing but huge follow through there all out dump free fall daily rsi is down at 21 weekly chart free fall getting oversold where's our next support level 275 i'm interested that daily rsi has me interested for an oversold bounce and we're approaching 275 that oversold four hour rsi cooling off makes me a bit less interested there's either a bottom fishing play off of 280 on Monday, and the bulls would have to break 303 to get a shift. Otherwise, watching 275 support for a potential stand for the bulls to look for an oversold bounce. Here's a double bottom at 280, and the 303 level has to break for the hourly trend change. Definitely expecting KSHB to have a short term daily oversold bounce next week. CVSI also has been very weak. All out dump, daily RSI, low 20s. Where's our next support level? Nowhere in sight. We're down into the 250s. Next support level is 233 and 2 psychological. And again, hitting the lowest price that we have seen in almost a year. It's over a year. That's very notable. We've dropped below any level of support that was established once the bulls got for real. In 2018, in the summer, we got our significant bull move and no follow through. Take that back. Just distracted by a dog. We got a significant bull move and established a lot of supports, but all of those support levels have broken. The weekly and the daily are oversold. The four-hour RSI is crushed. The hourly bounce at the end of the day or from the morning into the end of the day, 235 support, 260 resistance. And I would have to see a hold and a playoff of 235 support as a bottom fishing level, but it's a little bit of a different setup than what KSHB currently is because the hourly time frame for KSHB is right down near its low and CVSI has already started its oversold bounce. So worth watching for daily oversold bounces on both of those names. Just keeping in mind that if you are bullish and if you have profit, protect that profit and lock it in as you have it because we are just looking for daily lower highs and the bears have a very firm grip on all time frames. And Bev 282 is the only nearby support. If that 282 level breaks, we're looking down at two psychological again to be entering levels that we have not seen in years. And the red flag was the monthly equilibrium breaking bearish, but we haven't seen these levels in a very long time, in a year. So there's a lack of support. Weekly bear flag is on the verge of confirming if 282 breaks and we're not nearly as oversold as the other names. So there's only a playoff of 282 support. Increasing bear volume increases the odds that that support level will break. And if we do bounce anything under 346, just a lower high, there is nothing about these companies, or I should say there's nothing about these charts that is anything bullish, just oversold bounces, which I like because that's one of my edges as a trader. If you are newer to trading or if you don't have proven success with oversold bounce plays, these companies are of absolutely no interest to you until they can change momentum on the daily time frame at a bare minimum. PYX is dumping. So looking out on the weekly perspective for PYX, we had a weekly trend change, 1180 up to 16, higher low of 1232, higher high, lack of follow through. What does that mean? Zoom out and look for a bear flag. It's a potential monthly bear flag. It's a very weak bounce attempt. We dumped the last two days. We're looking back down at 1232 support. And on any bounce, we will just be looking for a daily lower high to form. ZYNE has been dumping. Daily inside bar on Friday, break of 780, 792 and we're looking at 721. Bull break of 843 and we're looking for a daily lower high on that oversold bounce. 
there was definitely a nice oversold bounce play to be had there this week, but we haven't changed the hourly trend. Low, high of the bounce, higher, low, lower, high, real tight. Inside bar set to break Monday. CXXI, so these are the penny stocks that are just continuing to drop to lower lows. No sign of support and all-time lows was 62, and we broke that on Friday. Anything under 70 cents is just a daily lower high. Volume climax is possible, but again, bears have complete control on these low cap names that have done nothing but pump and fade. And I certainly feel for the bag holders out there, you know there are a lot of them and they have just been holding for month after month and they're learning lessons as far as stop losses go and risk management. And we all learn those lessons at some point. So when the market sentiment shifts, these small caps will likely have some big moves, but until that happens, they are at the mercy of the bear market and tilt is the same. Tilt is down at the low, all time low, no bulls in sight, no daily trend change in sight, and just getting absolutely crushed. Weekly time frame: anything under 104 is a lower high. We can bounce 100% tomorrow and still form a weekly lower high. Daily time frame: anything under, I'd say anything under 72 is a lower high. We can go 50% tomorrow and still be in a daily downtrend. So there's just absolutely no sign of the bulls at this point. So bottom line, in conclusion, all eyes are on the safe act this week, watching for headlines and some hype and some, some stirring of the bulls because we are very clearly very weak right now. And to see names dropping to their lows of 2019 proves that. And again, all you have to do is look at where we were two weeks ago and where we are right now. And it is a completely different picture. So stay protective out there and keep an eye on the news. And let's see if we can get some kind of response from these stocks that we have an important vote coming up on Wednesday, because right now you certainly wouldn't know it. And if we see some green Monday and Tuesday, that would be notable. I appreciate you watching. Hope you do good things out there. We'll see you this week.